my name is Tomas and you're watching Casual DIY channel. In today's video, yes, it finally came that moment when I'm going to be making a sled for my table saw. Check out the video. So I wanted to make this sled for a very long time and I finally managed to get time to do it. So uh, the build itself is nothing groundbreaking is as any other sled although it will have some additional cool features that you may not have seen before so make sure to watch the whole video. First of all the runners I'm actually going to be using some HDP plastic as the runners themselves. Why? Because they will not shrink or expand with moisture as the wooden ones would do. And now I'm just adjusting the depth of those strips uh, so they're going to be just below uh, the depth of the channels themselves. For the base I'm going to be using plywood and it's going to be a laminated one so I've got two pieces of 12 millimeters in thickness and um, that will give me a nice stability and a working surface. Right then guys so uh, we've got our plywood cut to the right size. I have locked the fence in place as this will be my reference as to where we're going to actually uh, put the board on our tabletop. Um, at this stage we will be attaching the um, plastic runners to the main board. Why at this point? Because it will be actually easier to build the top of the jig with the runners on. We'll know exactly the reference point from the blade where it is on the jig. So the strips are actually not as deep as the whole channel there. Hence I've put some washers in there just to raise the runners just a little bit so they will be proud of the surface of the table and to attach them to start with i'm just going to use some um, ca glue uh, to make the initial bond with the board and then we'll reinforce it with some screws And I'm just going to leave it like this for a few minutes. Now we'll make the initial cut in the board just to establish where the blade is so we can continue with putting the jig together in the correct manner. And now it's time to cut out the rest of the plywood sheets. And now we'll put the T-tracks to the correct sizes, so we can proceed with the assembly of the jig. Okay, so let's glue all the pieces together. I'm also going to be using my brad nailer just to secure everything as the glue dries.
Right then, so in the next step, after the whole thing is set, the glue is finally dry, I want to make a channel where the blade's going to go. What are we going to use that for? Well, I'm going to try to do a uh, zero clearance insert plate that's going to go right in there because sometimes you want to use different types of blades with your jig and then obviously you are losing the zero clearance that you made initially with the jig and over time the jig would get damaged so the zero clearance plate gives us the option to actually just change it around and then you've got a nice beautiful zero clearance plate that you can use on a different types of blades or just swap it when it's damaged so i'm going to be using my router i'm going to do a 5.5 millimeters depth channel as i do have a sheet of plywood that is 5.5 millimeters in thickness which i'm going to use a couple of strips uh, for the future for the zero clearance plate and now it's time to install the t-tracks And now it's time to install the zero clearance plate. Next, let's install the T track on the fence. Right then, so let's introduce the first safety feature for this jig. Uh, as you can see, we've installed the T-Track at the front. And uh, yes, I didn't have the longer one, so this is what I had. So I'm missing a little bit on each end, uh, but I did order some more. So uh, I will replace it with a full, full length uh, T-Track there. But uh, I also got a piece of plywood that I cut to the right size. And what it's going to be it's going to be like a ledge on top of the fence and i'm going to be using that to push the jig through uh, the table saw so my hands are away from any of the uh, area where the blade may be but the second feature the second safety feature that we're going to introduce when the fence is in place there also is going to be a block of wood at the back of this fence uh, just to prevent the blade sticking out out of the jig so basically uh, the blade will bury itself in that block of wood but let's attach this one first okay so now it's time to attach the back fence of the jig uh, this one is not that important it just basically helps to hold the whole jig together and the alignment of that it's not that important we just need to make sure it's stable and secure Right, and so the next part is to actually install the front of the jig itself but how we're going to do that to make sure it's accurate parallel and straight to the blade itself well first of all before actually installing this we need to run the blade through it so then we're going to have a mark on our uh, zero clearance plates to know exactly where the blade is and then we can use our square to make sure the fence is actually parallel to the um to our blade okay so we're going to start with more or less the similar approach i've clamped the uh, main fence uh, to the whole jig i'm just going to rotate it to its back because it's just going to be a lot easier and I'm just going to screw one screw from one side and then we're going to use a square 
to see where the cut is from the blade that we just done on our table saw and then make sure the rest of the fence is parallel and we're going to drive in the second screw and the rest of the screws making sure that the uh, fence is parallel to the blade this is very important step and to get really good results to make sure everything's nice and square this is what you have to do Right, and the last step is to uh, give a bit of protection to the jig with a bit of Danish oil. Okay, and this sled is finished and running fantastically. As you can see, the top here, the shelf here, is where you put your hands and use the sled itself. Obviously, on the top, I've got a T-track. At the minute, it's too short. <laughs> But I did order a full size one, so I will change that to a full size T track here, guys. So don't worry about that. And obviously, that will be used for the stops, um, so you can have a repetitive cut as ease. But also, I'm going to use it for some jigs I'm planning to make. Now, the one of the features that I really like is the zero clearance uh, insert plate that is located over here. Now, again, if you're using different types of blades, i.e. Some, some of them will be wider, some of them will be narrower, and this is a perfect solution for you as you can replace it uh, and use it with the blade that you're currently using. But after some time, this will actually, you know, get damaged or whatever. You can quite easily change it. And then you've got that beautiful zero clearance plate. Now, you're probably wondering why, for goodness sake, I've got these T-tracks over here and on each side they're going the wrong way and this side is narrower, this side is wider. Right, okay, so this side over here, it will be my main side where I'm going to actually be clamping my work pieces. So I'm going to be using uh, these, uh, so I'm going to be using these clamps to clamp my workpiece so my hands are away from the blade so this is the safest route of uh, operating this jig if I can get this in so you put a piece of wood let's grab one like so and basically you secure it with the clamp and it's not gonna go anywhere so that's the reasoning behind it but I haven't done it for large pieces like this but I actually mainly done it because I wanted to cut smaller pieces where there isn't much space for your fingers or anything else to actually grab onto. So these clamps will come in handy when you are actually uh, cutting smaller pieces and you want to keep your fingers away from them. Now as you can see uh, I've clamped this uh, more or less in the middle of it so the clamp is away from the blade. Obviously from the other side we can put this clamp as well and now this piece will not go anywhere right okay so we've got few options of clamping things but as you know me by now there is another project coming out for these um, T-tracks so there will be few jigs I'm going to be making for this particular sled uh, the first one will be from the right side um, I'm really excited about this one and I hope it will ease my workflow uh, so I'm planning to make some pen blanks and knife scales I was looking for a really nice safe way of cutting smaller pieces like that on a table saw and um, I think this could be it so if you're not a subscriber consider subscribing to my channel to check out what jigs I will be making for this sled but let's have a test cut and see how it performs. Mm -hmm. 